What is happening guys? My name is Jamie. Today we are doing 2020 albums and EP ranked. This is all the albums I reviewed on the channel. We're talking about single reviews for every single album, including EPs that were involved on this channel. So I did 80 album reviews this year, 80 album reviews. This is when I came a complete review channel, moved away from reactions and just did reviews. At the moment of this recording, I just finished the Soil Work album review. We got 80 albums to rank. This is gonna be the biggest fucking album ranking of all fucking time. I will be doing this every single year from now on. Let's get on with it. So coming in at number 80 is Six Feet Under, Nightmares of the Decomposed. This album is an abomination, stay the fuck away from it. I absolutely hate it. Chris Barnes' vocals were absolutely terrible. And it, yeah, it's a terrible album. Next up is British Lion The Burning. British Lion The Burning is a pretty abysmal album. It really is. The vocals are shit. The instrumentals are okay. It's an oh, rock. It's not a good rock album. Not a good rock album. Overly bloated. And yeah, stay a fuck away from it. Corey Taylor, CMFT must be stopped. This album is okay in my opinion, but to me it's a sellout by Corey Taylor. Yeah, Corey Taylor just wants this money. And he just created a, a cash grab album, which had some catchy songs you could say, but yeah, nothing really that grabbed me. When you expect from Corey Taylor, you expect heavy metal, not this shit. Coming up next is ACDC Power Up. This album is okay, it's a generic ACDC album. Nothing for the better, nothing for the worse, it's just okay. Give it a five out of 10 probably. Coming in at 76 is Behemoth of Forest. This is the first EP on the list, and holy shit, this EP absolutely sucked, especially when I had The Forest on. A Forest isn't a very good song, not with that Nicholas Dickhead uh, singing. Nurgle wasn't great as well on this uh, on this EP. There's two good songs on it, but yeah, it's definitely the weakest, weakest EP I reviewed. Next up, Breaks My Heart, it's Amaranth Manifest. This album is poor in my opinion. This is the weakest Amaranth album. <laughs> I mean, there are some new metal elements, electronic elements, but yeah, I've listened to this album countless times. I pre gave it a pretty shitty review as well, and I'm gonna give it another shitty score. I still stand by my 4.5 out of 10. Next up is Avatar Hunter Gatherer, slightly better than Amaranth in my opinion, just slightly, except this album is very weak as well, didn't really enjoy it, didn't like the layout of the song, songwriting wasn't very good, and yeah, Avatar Hunter Gavra sits here. Next up is Poppy, I disagree. This album was really overhyped by a lot of reviewers, and I understood it was very different. She incorporated pop elements along with metal elements, sounded like a baby metal at times, but yeah, in my opinion, it just doesn't work. But there is still some good, solid work by Poppy. But Poppy, I disagree, is sitting at 73. It's coming out at 72 is Lorna Shaw, Immortal. CJ McCurry is on this album. Instrumental-wise, it's pretty solid. I don't really want to go back to it anymore. This is why it's so damn low. It's still an okay album, my opinion. The vocals are absolutely insane. Really enjoy his vocals. But yeah, what can I say? Lorna Shaw Immortal sits at number 72. Next up is Moore's Precipient 7. A very overhyped album by a lot of people. Everyone loves this album for some reason. Honestly, I don't. And I, pretty, and I gave it a pretty low score as well. I just don't understand. The production is quite thin. I, when I want Maladeth, I want some meaty gritty guitar. Not this thin shit. Coming up at 70 is Lamb of God Self-Titled. This album is okay. It's a good album for what it is, you could say. But yeah, it's it's still a really weak album by Lamb of God. It's still quite an enjoyable album. Coming at number 69, hey, great number. Tall Form, Culto Altero. So this is a death metal band, and there are it is a pretty solid band. It's pretty fun. There are elements of black and death metal. There are elements of death metal, but it's an okay band from Portugal, I believe. And these are the albums that are, that are pretty good. Next up at number 68 is Blackfell Brides Restitch These Wounds. I did do a review on it, and to be honest, I was pretty disappointed in this fucking album. Although I feel like it's better than the other albums that have been mentioned, it just doesn't hold that true form that Blackfell Brides had in Stitch These Wounds. And the, the screams are very low within the mix, 
It's just not the same, man. It's just not the same. Coming in at number 67, surprise, surprise, is Imperium Triumphant Alpha Bill. This album has definitely grown on me. Like, I remember I absolutely shat on this album big time. I think I gave it a 2 out of 10. Well, the score has lifted a little bit in my opinion. It's definitely not the worst album. I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10 now if that's alright. There are some good songs like City Swine. It was a pretty good song. But overall, I'm still trying to get my head around this avant-garde metal. But yeah, Imperium Triumphant, you guys should be happy that Imperium Triumphant is not last on the list. Imperium Triumphant is at number 67. Although with Imperium Triumphant, I kind of like their early days when they were true raw black metal, not this avant-garde shit. Coming in at 66 is Hazard Delirium. This is a thrash metal album and it was a pretty enjoyable thrash metal album. I did give it a little bit of a harsher score of 6 out of 10, but man, listening to it again, it's an okay album. Not the best thrash metal album of the year, but it's just an okay album. Coming in at number 65 is You're a Catastrophe, is Trivium, What the Dead Men Say. This is an okay album, not their best album, it's a very disappointing album by Trivium in my opinion, but it's not as great and holy grail as everyone's saying it is. The Sin of the Sin is way fucking better than this album, that's for sure. But yeah, what the Dead Men Say is an okay album, it's slowly growing on me. Coming at number 64 is Five Finger Death Punch, F8 or Fate. Yeah, they probably cop a bit of hate on this, but I feel that, yeah, this album is an okay Five Finger Death Punch album. A lot of emotion conveyed in these vocals. There are some good lyrics on this, pretty solid riffages as well. I do love the drumming. I do love the ballads on this. So yeah, what can I say? It's a pretty fun fucking album. Coming up next is number 63 is My Dying Bride, The Ghost of Orion. The Ghost of Orion is an okay album, in my opinion. A very disappointing album by My Dying Bride standards. I didn't really enjoy it at first, but you know what? Given a few listens uh, this month, in fact, when I did the disappointing albums, I still stay true that it was a very disappointing album by... Um, My Dying Bride, but yeah, what can I say? It's way better than the other shit I've just mentioned. Coming up number 62 is Nightwish Human to Nature. A solid album by Nightwish, especially this one, but this two man fell to shit, that's for sure. And it's a pretty disappointing album. Built up on the 30 minute song, really hyped me up, but listen to a 30 minute song with no vocals, no guitar work, nothing, just, I was pretty disappointed. Coming in at number 61 is this avant-garde rock band, Gagoyle, and their self-titled album. Very enjoyable. I love how experimental they are. It's quite grungy at times. Reminds me of Alice in Chains. But yeah, pretty solid album. So coming in at number 60 is Annihilator. Ballistic, sadistic. This is a very fun thrash metal album. I absolutely love some of these songs. Some really hard-hitting songs. Very catchy. But it's sitting at number 60. Coming at 59 is God Dethroned Illuminati. I did this album review way back and it's a good album. I believe it's a mixed review, sort of mixed review. And God Dethroned didn't actually enjoy that review, I remember. I was saying, hey man, you're being, you're being a little bit too harsh on us. I said, hey, you got to respect some other people's opinions, yeah? So stick a breadstick up your ass. But overall, God Dethroned was a pretty good album in my opinion. There are some really good spots and some weaknesses as well. But Illuminati sits here. Coming out 58 is Seven Dust, Blood and Stone. Seven Dust and a very enjoyable band. Love Lejean's vocals. His vocals are so damn good. And it's overall great alternative metal album. Really love how meaty the guitars are. Coming at number 57 is Marco Hieleta and the album Pyres of the Black Hearts. Oh, Stones. Picking out Stones. Oh yeah, Stones is such a catchy song. I just love the other melodies of these songs. Great songwriting by Marco. Marco's album is way better than Nightwish's album, that's for sure. Nightwish Human 2 Nature can get in the bin. So coming in at 56 is Static X Project Regeneration Volume 1. Wayne Static passed away back in 2014 and the band decided to create an album with Wayne Static with his vocals on. And this album is a pretty solid. I love how new metally this album sounds. Moves on towards the alternative metal 
alternative metal side. Static X, the regeneration of Pro, uh, the regeneration volume one is a pretty solid album. Coming in at number 55 is Natverb Stigdom. Yeah, this is a great black metal album. This was the this is the first black metal album I did a review on, I believe. No, that was Grunt. No, that was Vendral Spectre. But Vendral Spectre will pop on the list later on. But yeah, Natverb Stigdom is a really awesome album. <coughs> I love the production. I do love the melodies. Songs are quite long. But yeah, if you haven't heard out, if you haven't checked out Snatford Stigdom, check him out. Coming in at number 54 is Grimer, Intricacies of the Bode Wisdom. I'm really surprised this is this is that fucking low, to be honest. Intricacies of the Bode Wisdom was a great black metal album. This was the first black metal album that I heard of the year back in Ray back in January. And I knew we were going in for a great black metal year. Intricacies of Bode Wisdom is very impactful. The vocals are insane. And yeah, what can I say? Fantastic, fantastic album. Coming at number 53 is Neck of the Woods, The Annex of Ire. This is a really interesting, how can I say, progressive deathcore album. It'll probably be up there to be my favorite deathcore album of the year. I really did enjoy it. And overall, some great songs. Love the solos on this. But yeah, it was really great listening back to The Annex of Ire. So coming at number 52 is Umbrief, A Place of Buried Light. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about Aussies here. Umbrief sounds at times like Opeth, very proggy. Love how folky some of these songs are. And some of these songs are quite long. His vocals are intense. Really surprised this is this slow, to be honest. But yeah, Umbrief, A Place of Buried Light, what can I say? It's a pretty good album. Coming in at 51 is Serenity, The Last Night. Holy shit, I can't believe this is low, to be honest. Serenity Last Night really took me by surprise. This is a power metal album, got a great concept. Choruses are so damn fucking catchy. They really are, absolutely adore this album. I know I gave it a pretty high score as well. I stand by my score. Coming in at 50 is The War, Gospel of the Vile. It's at 50, Gospel of the Vile is a pretty solid album, love it. Really enjoy how doomy this album is. It's death doom, some very slow moments. Coming in at 49 is Kingdom of Giants Passenger. This is a really enjoyable metalcore album. I loved it. There are some electronic elements. They create generic metalcore, but generic metalcore done right. But yeah, this is why it's so damn high because the repeat factor is there. Coming in at 48 is Ether Realm Redneck Vikings. Such an enjoyable, enjoyable record this is. I love how folky at times, but this is sort of a mellow death album, you could say. It's a really interesting songs as well. Really nice solos, love his vocals, although I feel that Tarot is slightly better. So coming in at number 47 is the Black Dahlia Murder, Verminous. Black Daily Murder Vermis is a really slimy, mellow death album. It's heavy, love the solos. I love how there are Slayer, Slayer influences in some of these songs. I just love how times, they, I just love how they've also been inspired by Cradle of Filth on this. Coming in at number 46 is this Doom droney metal band, The Dark Buddha Rising Methriata. Methriata is such an awesome album overall. I just love the dark, gritty guitar riffs on this. Not to mention his vocals are very clean, but he incorporates his harsh, aggressive vocals that I absolutely love. Methriata is a really, really fun album. Gotta have some patience though. Patience to enjoy it. Coming in at number 45 if, is Wolfheart, Wolves of Corellia. Yeah, very enjoyable Mellow Death album. Loved it. These vocals are so damn aggressive. I just, I really do enjoy Wolfheart. So in my opinion, at number 45, I feel that, yeah, this is one of their weakest albums. Wolfheart haven't created a bad album, my opinion. But yeah, I'm pretty happy it's sitting at 45. Coming at 44 is Undeath, Lesions of a Different Kind, a recent album I did. It's a pretty solid album. I listened to it a lot after the review, but unfortunately the repeat factor is slowly dying for me. Undeath, Lesions of a Different Kind, I'm pretty happy that's sitting at 44. So coming at 43 is Voodoo Gods. Um, the Divinity of Blood. This is a fantastic album. Corpse fucking grinders on it. Love his vocals. Lyrics at, lyrics at times are a little bit cheesy, but damn, it's a fun fucking death metal album. I just love how proggy it is. It's Dream Theater meets Camel Corpse. It's got a Dream Theater-esque vibe, this album. It's very proggy. It's awesome. Dream Theater meets Cannibal Corpse on Voodoo Gods. 
So coming in at number 42 is Unleash the Arches, The Abyss. Yeah, this is a really fun album. Although I, I am a little bit disappointed in the album, but it, it doesn't have that repeat factor. I did love how the story went. The story was a story was fun. The story was fun. One of the best concept albums of the year. Coming out at 41 is Salps, Relatus de Angustia. Woo! This is Black and Death. This is one of the best Black and Death albums of the year. I absolutely adore it. I love the elements of black metal along with Black and Death. His vocals are absolutely incredible. His growls at times sound like Nurgle. So overall, Salps, Relatus de Angustia is sitting at 41. But holy shit, this is a really fiery album. Coming at number 40 is Demons and Wizards 3. Another review I did, yeah, this is a fantastic album, it really is. I really do enjoy Hansi and John Chef is working together so damn well. Yo, cha, cha, cha. Oh yeah, what can I say? This is great, great album, very proggy, quite power metally, but damn fun. Coming at number 39 is Polaris, The Death of Me, one of the most overhyped albums for me for this year. I do agree that it's not the best metal album in my opinion. I believe I gave this a solid 10 out of 10 looking back on my review, but you know what? I have to downgrade that score. Look, it's still an enjoyable album, don't get me wrong. The repeat factor is gone for me now. And a lot of other albums that I listen to now are just so much better than Polaris Death of Me. And it's still a pretty solid album for what it is. Coming at 38 is Sons of Apollo, MMXX. This is a great prog metal album. I'm really surprised this is this low, to be honest. Love how Mike Portnoy is on this album, and Derek as well. They work so well together. The vocals are fantastic. It's a, just some proggy goodness on this. Some really fun songs. Sons of Apollo MMXX is a great album. So coming out in 37 is Green Card Nation, Lees of Yesteryear. Although this is not their best album in their discography, it's still a pretty solid album for what it is. I played this countless times, to be honest, but I did get sick of it. I did get sick of it at the end, and it has dropped a lot in my rankings. It was going to make it into my top 20 albums of the year, but unfortunately it didn't. So coming at number 36 is very surprising, Vengeful Spectre. This is a great Chinese black metal band. The repeat factor is there for sure, Although, again, I listened to it a lot and it did drop in the rankings because I felt there are better black metal albums out there. But yeah, Ventral Spectre is a really stellar album. So go check it out. It's a great concept album as well. It's Sound of the Chinese Wars. It's fantastic. So coming at number 35, it is freezing in my mind. It's Haunt Mind Freeze. Look, this is, this is one of the best heavy metal albums of the year. The vocals at times are a bit hit and miss. But you know what, there are some great guitar solos, some great songwriting as well. But yeah, Mind Freeze is a pretty awesome album. Coming in at 34 is Haken, Virus. Yeah, surprise this is that low, but this is a great progressive metal album. Although I feel there are better progressive metal albums out there this year. But yeah, there wasn't much in terms of prog this year, to be honest. It was more of the extreme metal sides, such as Black and Doom and Death. But yeah, Haken, Virus, is a good album. Coming out 33 is Havoc Kruner, Jonas Sonnen Soda. Whoa, what can I say about this album? Yeah, so I did talk about the, did talk about the, did talk to the lead vocalist and he said he was inspired by Judas Priest and he said Judas Priest was better than Iron Maiden. I couldn't forgive him for that, but there are some Iron Maiden guitar riffs on this. You can tell they've been influenced by Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. It's a very fun, heavy metal, black metal time. Havoc Kruner is such an awesome album. Coming at 32 is an EP, Bring Me The Horizon, Survival Horror. It is a fucking album that care what any cunt says, this is an album. Survival Horror is such a fun album, it really is. I just love how different it is to Bring Me The Horizon. You know, experimenting at times, they sound like Linkin Park, especially on Teardrops. Teardrops is such a catchy song, but yeah, fun album. Coming at 31 is Pretty Man Immersion. Pretty Man Immersion really took me by surprise. This is the album that I changed my mind on. Um, after a review I checked out, I think it was Mountain's review, he said he absolutely hated it. So um, I was going in absolutely hating it as well, but holy shit, I enjoyed it. I love how doomy it is. It's just overall fun album, really fun album. Coming at 30 is really low. Marilyn Manson, We Are Chaos. Marilyn Manson, We Are Chaos really surprised me. First off, I thought I wasn't going to enjoy it. I love the David Bowie ins inspiration on this album. Some awesome songs overall, some very melancholic moments. 
It's one of the one of his best albums in my opinion. Absolute Dawn, Marilyn Manson, We Are Chaos, and I still play it. So coming in at 29 is Black Crown Initiate, Violent Portraits of Doomed Escape. What can I say? It's like a mix of Opeth Dream Theater. Such an awesome album overall. I love how prog it is. Love his prog love how harsh his vocals are throughout this album. It's a pretty solid album, in my opinion. Absolutely adore it. Coming at 28 is Oceans of Slumber, a self-titled. This is a fantastic album as well, incorporating elements of death metal and her vocals. Her vocals are so damn good in this. Love the beautiful harmonization between his vocals and her vocals. It's a really awesome moments as well. Coming at 27 is Deftones Ohms. I wouldn't believe I'd have Deftones at number 27 after I absolutely shat on this band all for my whole entire channel. I said I absolutely hate Deftones. I can't stand them. And now they're sitting on a 27 Ohms. You know what? I opened my mind and checked all their discography out and they're not that bad. And I do enjoy most of their stuff. So Deftones owns a pretty solid album in their discography. I think it's one of their best albums. Way better than White Pony, that's for sure. Coming out 26, Paul Bearer, Forgotten Days. Really enjoyable doom metal album. I know I was shitting on the overall production on this. This record really grows on you. It really does. I know I played this a lot after my review to really understand it. And finally, I finally clicked to me. But yeah, I'd have to probably have to put in my best metal albums of the year now. Coming in at number 25 is Lords of Black, Alchemies of Souls Part 2, Part 1. This really took me by surprise. I just love how Dio inspired the vocalist is on this. He sounds like Dio, especially on some of these songs like Tides of Blood. Holy shit. Absolutely incredible album, Lords of Black is. Number 24 is Fires in the Distance, a Distance Echoes from the Deep. This is very doomy, it's very doomy. It's elements of death doom, you could say. There's some orchestral moments, it's pretty fun. And yeah, I play this album a lot even now. So coming in at number 23 is the latest album I just reviewed, is Soil Work, A Wisp of the Atlantic. What can I say? This is a pretty solid album by Soil Work, and I keep saying it's an it's this album. Like it's 37 minutes long, it has to be a fucking album. Even if I do a Soil Work album ranking, I will add this because it's a friggin' album. Absolutely loved it. I really did. The fucking 16 minute song is a masterpiece in my opinion. Love how prog it is. You can tell they've been inspired by Dream Theater. Opeth, such an awesome album overall. Coming at number 22 is Napalm Death, Throws of Joy in the Jaws of the Fetusism. Oh, Napalm Death, I really got into this year. Absolutely adore most of the stuff, apart from Scum, as a lot of people know, but I love their recent stuff and Throws of, and, and this album really took me by surprise. I know, I remember I did a review for this. When I was doing a review, I was absolutely hyped absolutely hyped because lockdown was finally over. Day Hard and Death, Throws of Joy in the Jaws of the Fetusism. It's a pretty solid album. So coming at number 21 is John Petrucci, Terminal Velocity. Yeah, this album really took me by surprise as well. I'm um, not a big fan of instrumentals to be honest, but you know what, this instrumental kicked ass, kicked fucking ass, and John Petrucci really slays. It is demonical world domination. This is one of my favorite death metal albums of the year. I love how melodic this album is. It's got some awesome monomath inspirations. It's just fantastic. It's fun. I played this album, but I played this album so much this year. So much when it was released. Coming at number 19 is Incantation, Sect of Vile Divinities. This is a really awesome death doom album. Elements of death metal, elements of death doom, funeral doom as well. Incantation do it right. They do it right when it comes to doom, death metal. They do it so damn right. I love how fast and furious some of these songs are and how slow some of these songs are. But yeah, really enjoyed this album. Love his vocals. Coming at number 18 is Luna's Call Void. Huh. This album was amazing. It was absolutely amazing with only 800 listeners on Spotify I'm really surprised that this band hasn't blown up. It's proggy. It's technical and it's so much fun Coming in at number 17 is make them die slowly the body count Continues good album such an enjoyable album fun. This is now an Afrak side project So Mick Kenny's in this band love the guitar grooves love how catchy some of these songs are Void's vocals are incredible but yeah, sitting at number 17. So coming in at number 16 is the best black and death metal album of the year. It's Gyra Limbo. 
Gyro Limbo, such an awesome, awesome album. I loved it. Although I feel that the other album was slightly better in my opinion, the previous album. But this album is pretty solid. It's very behemoth inspired. Love how long the songs are. Love how proggy some of these songs are. And just overall it's a fun fucking time. Coming at number 15 is Convocation Ashes Coalesce. What can I say about this album? This is a Funeral Doom album. So damn good. Very slow, very cavernous vocals. But damn, it's one hell of a time. Coming at number 14 is a recent album that I just reviewed. It's Ice Alert World in Ruins. This is a hellish black metal album. Some really intense vocals on this. I just love how at times there's a doom sections as well. It's just such a really enjoyable album. I love this and World in Ruins really took me by surprise. Coming at number 13 is Make Them Die Slowly again, Ferox. Make Them Die Slowly released two albums this year. They sound similar to a now Nathrak, except they're a little bit lighter. This sort of diet now Nathrak. Love the vocals, love the guitar work, and love the symphonic elements that build throughout this album. Next up is Catatonia City Barrels. What can I say? This made it to my best metal albums of the year. Absolutely adored it. Jonas' vocals so damn good. Love how different this Catatonia album is, incorporating more heavy metal elements such as songs like Behind the Blood. But then you got the song Vanishes. Vanishes is such an awesome song. I just love the vocals. It's just tearing me. Oh, it's making me cry right now. Great album overall. So we're heading towards the nitty gritty now. Coming at number 11 is Code Orange underneath. This is a great album overall. I love how sonically and apocalyptic this album is. It just feels so damn claustrophobic at times. There are some amazing songs like Auto Combine, Soul of, the, uh, Soul of the Rabbit Hole, I think, and Underneath, Underneath, so damn good. Reba's vocals so damn good. Jamie's vocals so damn good. It's a fucking solid album. I absolutely adored it. And I know there was, I know I did a really long album review for that one. Terry at number 10. Now we're doing the top 10 now. It's Dark Tune Quarterly Moment. This album was the gateway for me to get into Dark Tranquility and holy shit, this band is fantastic. It really is. Moment has some gothic elements, very doomy elements as well. Some really awesome vocals. Love his vocals at times. This is a really solid album by Dark Tranquility. One of my favorites. Coming in at number nine is Black Metal Masterpiece, Paysage de Hiva, but it's not involved it is Schnee. I did an album review recently and this album whoa blew my balls off absolutely adore it loved it love how atmospheric it is love how cold it is love the songs love how symphonic this album is at times not overly cheesy the lo-fi lo -fi production is so damn good but yeah Paysage to Heber Schnee is an absolutely solid album next up coming at number eight is Achilles Oculus Melano. This is the most horrific black metal album you can imagine in 2020. It is the scene of 2020, how apocalyptic this album is. Some really awesome moments. It's black metal, long fucking songs as well. Some really dark atmospheric guitar. Just overall great album. Next up is Paysage de Hiva again and the album involved. This is a double album, a concept album. I am getting the album, by the way. Jimmy and Vold have been my favorite song of the album. I just love how dark, I just love how gloomy it is. But yeah, what can I say? Paysage de Hiva is a solid album. Coming at number six is Countless Skies Glow. This album took me by surprise. It is the best Mellow Death album in my opinion. Gotta scratch me balls. Like again, they've been inspired by Dream Theater, Opeth, Rush, just so many prog metal bands, but they combine Mellow Death together. Very similar to what Soul Work did in my opinion, except Countless Skies do a little bit better. But overall, Countless Skies Glow is like a nine out of 10. Coming number five is Fate's Warning. Long Day, Good Night. And this is when we get to the best metal albums of the top five. Fate's Warning, Long Day, Good Night is so damn good. Love the ballads on this. Love Ray's vocals. Love how prog it is. Oh, God. What a mouth-watering album. Coming at number four is Caligula's Horse Rise Radiant. Now, I did a review for this. Uh, re I redeemed myself with a review. At first, I didn't like it. I absolutely shut on the Discovery. But we're not talking about Discovery album reviews that I did because if I did do a Discovery album review series, holy shit, we would be here all fucking day. 
But you know what? We're just doing single album, single video album reviews this video. Fantastic album, absolutely adore it. Love how proggy this album is. In my opinion, this is the best prog metal album of the year. Coming at number three is The Ocean, Phenozoic 2, Mesozoic, Xenozoic. Ah, man, what can I say? What can I say? It's an absolute masterpiece, this album. Jurassic, Triassic, Cretaceous period, a whole lot of mental Pleistocene, black metal elements. This album has it all. This is that sitting at number three. One album that's slightly better is Paradise Lost Obsidian All. I know I gave this album a perfect score, a 10 out of 10, and I stand by my 10 out of 10. This album is fucking fantastic. It is the best Paradise Lost album in their discography. I absolutely adore it. They combine all their sounds into one. So damn good. Paradise Lost Subsidian is sitting at number two. And no surprise, coming at number one is, um, yeah, it's a Now Nathrak Endarkament. This is the best album of the year, in my opinion. This is the best album I reviewed on my channel, in my opinion. I just love how all these songs are so damn catchy, so damn melodic. Endarkament, such a catchy song. Age of Starter ends. And then you got Libidinous, a pig with cocks in its eyes. So damn good. Along with Feeding the Death Machine. Uh, create art, though the world may perish. You got just so many amazing songs on this. And now Nathrak in Darkman is sitting at my number one spot. And holy shit, we went through 80 albums this video. It's going to be a blast editing, but I hope you guys did enjoy it. Blast reviewing music this year. Join me next year as we will review another 80 albums on this channel. Since we are now doing classic rock as well, I will be moving more onto classic rock album reviews. But we'll be also doing new album reviews every single weekend of 2021. So guys, that's it for all the album reviews for this year. Yes, yeah, Soul Work, A Whisper of Atlantic will probably be my last album review. There may be another album review later on this month called Forte Carme di Nina. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that album. So there may be another album review, so there could be 81 album reviews this year. So comment below what your favorite albums were in the comments below of all the albums I mentioned. And do you agree or disagree with my opinion? Do you agree with my ranking? These are all the single video reviews I actually did on this channel this year. So we did 80 album reviews. Never thought I'd do 80 album reviews in a year. Let me know your favorite album review that I did for this year. Do you agree or disagree with my opinion? And I will see you in the next one.